want this to be very interactive, even if we have a short time. So I'll jump to an activity and I have now more than 30 people who will participate in our Guess the Word. Please do not just be a silent spectator there. Do not just uh, listen to my uh, inputs here. I'd like everybody to get engaged in our Guess the Word exercise. The objective here is for you to correctly guess the words that I'll feature. The words here will refer to things that we miss from our pre-COVID training days. So for each of the following slides, a picture will be flashed and underneath the photo or image will be letters. It's good that we provided some letters, but the others are left blank. Please type in the chat room your nickname. Actually, I don't need your nickname because I can see it in the chat room, so you can remove that nickname. Please just type in the correct and complete word. Wrong spelling, wrong. And just so we can feel a semblance of what you can also do in your virtual classes. Let's proceed to the first item. By the way, are you ready? Please type in ready. If you're ready to type in responses, ready to participate in our first game, I can see more than 10 folks who are ready. We're now showing the first item. Ready, get set, go. Things that we miss from our previous pre-COVID training sessions. Take note of the missing letters there. Take note of the letters that are present. And Carlwin gave us the first correct answer. Is it Carlwin? Sorry, I got Yvette giving me the word snacks. And once again, you don't need to type in your nicknames. Yvette, if I only have a Starbucks gift certificate here, I will be sending this prize to you. Yvette gets the first point. Let's go to the next item. Ready, get set, go. What is this next item that we have been uh, missing from our pre-COVID days? What is this item? Trophy. But please make sure that you also look at, uh, is it a trophy? Is it a trophy? It's prizes. Congratulations, Mark. Mark Latoha, my dear friend Mark Latoha is here. You're correct, Mark. The correct answer would be prizes. So one point for Mark. Let's proceed to our second to the last item. Or I believe our last item. Go. What is this that we are missing? What do we miss? And I have PJ Seya giving us the correct answer, classroom. Okay. And what's tough is that while I just intend to give tips in 30 minutes and then proceed to Q&A, I also want you to experience one, at least one exercise, one of the so many exercises that we use so that we can really spice up and engage our learners in our LJMB workshops. There's one more. I'm sorry, there's one more. There's one more. Come on, come on. What is this last word? There's one more. What is this last word? Go ahead, please. Who can guess? Who can guess this word? It's not a break. Mark, you now have two points. So if I have a pack of chocolates here, Mark, I'll send it to you. Congratulations, because the correct word that we have here is the word props. Okay. Can you all just join me and unmute your microphones and let's all give a virtual applause to our scorers in this program. A virtual applause. I already, I already introduced two things. Yes? Okay. And of course, you know, when you get, uh, when you unmute, you have to go back on uh, mute again. I just introduced a guess the word game. Some of you may have used this. Some of you may have done something similar. If this is new to you, you can now apply that and implement that in your next virtual class. 
and the virtual applause to really establish that sense of connection is one way by which you can acknowledge and recognize uh, good deeds, behaviors, and performance in your training classes. What have we been missing? Which one of those have we really been missing? Prices and snacks in the classroom and the props in training because of COVID, we really have to transition to the only, the most dominant way, the virtual way of delivering training. And, and any learning professional, our life, our daily routine revolves around these five stages in the instructional design cycle, the ADDI. Especially when I started my training career in the 1990s, if you're a trainer, you know Adi. You cannot be a trainer if you do not know the end-to-end -end cycle. Although over the course of time, because training departments got so big, training professionals specialized. Some have been good in analysis and focused on doing PNAs. Some have been instructional designers, and we do hear a lot of those nowadays. Some materials developers, some with floor time, those who really want the action, the extroverts who really be, or part, want to be part of the class, and some have even focused on evaluation. But just showing you that because of COVID, there are three steps in this ADDI cycle that really needs to change. And that is none other than design, delivery, and our implementation. Analysis would utilize the same methods. We just need to you know, jump into video calls with stakeholders and get the needs, training needs. They will give us data to provide direction on training needs. Evaluation, it was not on site, but these three things, design development and implementation will really have to change a lot because of this virtual or online or digital learning setup. And I'm now, I'll now begin to give my uh, list of uh, tips to you. I'll start with the four major challenges that I encounter or I observe in uh, virtual, virtual classes. The first one, is the lack of in-person presence. We have really complained about this, not just in virtual learning, but in virtual teams, remote teams, or even work at home. How many of you work at home? Please type in me. If you work at home or work from home, please type in me. And there are a lot of you, I suppose, that's why you're here, because you're working from home. You need to reach out to your audiences or to your trainings. My next question is, do you like working from home? Does this work for you? If you like working from home, please type in like. Please type in like if you like working from home. Because just like Jocelyn, Abigail, Mary, and then uh, Tasha, I like it too. Yes, I'm more productive. I cut four hours of my travel time each day, so I'm more productive. But let's also acknowledge that this may not be the same. This may not be the case for everybody. Yes, but for now, this is it, and we'll have to leverage on it. And working at home or virtual learning, people have always given that reason, lack of in-person presence. But six months into this setup, to me, if I hear that, that's already an alibi. That's already an excuse. Okay? In the past five months, we should have learned a trick or two. So we should, of course, be able to participate better even if you have poor internet. Yes? And there are a lot of ways by which we can replace. We A lot of things that we can use as substitutes to provide that semblance of in-person presence, and I'll share that with you in a while. In fact, as I have demonstrated, the way I ask questions and the way you respond in the chat room, 
is a good replacement for that in-person presence. Yes, I may not see your faces. I don't need to. As long as I see you responding in the chat room, that's already a way of feedback. Linking that to the second challenge, which is lack of two-way feedback. And what do I mean by lack of two-way feedback? In the classroom before, we can hear vocal cues. Our participants, our trainees and learners laugh whenever we crack a joke. They blurt out, aha, if they have realizations. They have side comments and they are able to answer our, question, uh, answer our questions on the spot. There are also a lot of nonverbal cues, right? You can see them nodding. You can see their eye contact. They're paying attention to you. Right now, I don't have all of that, yes? But there should be replacements so that we can at least have the semblance of feedback. Number three, the lack of physical interaction. In our classes before, whether you do product training or process training or soft skills training or team building, regardless of the level of your participants, we are used to, especially in the Philippines, integrating a lot of activities. Yes? Training games, role plays, correct? What else? Case studies, group discussions. And I just mentioned four of the so many training methods. Can you please chat with me and type in, during pre-COVID days, what's your favorite training method apart from lecture? Aside from lecture, what is your favorite training method? Role play, case study, small group discussions, simulations, training games. I'm now getting a workshop. Please type in the chat room. You like workshops. You have a list of guide questions, yes? And yes, you can combine workshop with small groups. Abigail mentioned training games or what we call SLEs, Structured learning experiences. People get blindfolded or there is a puzzle or there are cups and you have to shoot balls into these cups. You, you know, there can be a thousand and one of these training games. And you can also have scenario-based learning, very similar to cases, yes? Where you give them a scenario, a situation, and a problem to solve, and then they discuss solutions. Can also be a very good segue to role plays especially if you want the solutions presented in class. Okay. The fourth one, and I have to really acknowledge this, especially when I was doing my first round of webinars back in April, I lost control. Isn't it obvious? I do not know what you're doing there. I don't see you. I can't hear you. I don't know if you're still listening to me. So I lost a lot of that control. Okay? And by the way, just checking with you, just wanting to have fun with this uh, group as well. What are you actually doing there while listening to me? Be honest. What are you doing there? <laughs> Eating. See, a lot of people are multitasking, okay? Chatting with others. Some of you might be working, okay? Some of you might be drinking Coke. Oh, I envy you. Okay, doing reports and doing sourcing. Perfect. No? Some of you are using this as a podcast, right? Some of you who are not chatting with me, you're doing something else and you're listening to my voice here and not able to appreciate some of our slides. Okay? By the way, since there is no handout to be provided, feel free. Take screenshots and take notes. Take photos. Thank you, Yvette for taking down notes as well. My dear friends, I presented four challenges. Which of these can you really relate with or relate to? Please type in the number. Please type in the number of what you can best or most relate to. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? Number four, number three, number two. And of course, they're also all related to each other, yes? I'm seeing two, I'm seeing a lot of four, I lost control. Okay? And I, I can see one and two as well. Thank you. Okay? And these were the challenges that I was confronted with during that first week in April where I did, that first week alone, I delivered 20 webinars. And during that first week, I was using only one platform. I didn't know Zoom. 
I didn't know MS Teams. I don't want to try out others. I was using Webinar Jam. How many of you are familiar with Webinar Jam? Please type in me. If you're familiar with Webinar Jam, type in me. Okay. Carlwin, right? I like it, Carlwin, because it gave me greater control. Of the little control that I have, it gave me more of that control. Yes? Because nobody can interrupt me only through chat. Nobody can uh, un unmute and speak. Yes? And at that time, it served the purpose. However, I was only running one hour webinars in the first week of April. And I know that when my clients would come back and request for full-blown trainings, of course, we no longer run full eight-hour training sessions. That's too much of Zoom fatigue, but it could be two or three hours. I needed to find answers to address these challenges. And the first batch of tips that I'd like to share with you, I'm sure that I've given a lot of other tips earlier, but let's add to that. Here are now tips that I can give on design. Okay? You know, the biggest constraint that we have right now, my dear friends, is you cannot just lecture anymore. Before, some trainers can still wing it, yes? Especially subject matter experts, and if your participants, your trainees are dependent on you, you can lecture. If you ask the class a question, it already becomes a class discussion. If you pose a question and then you divide your class into pockets or small groups, it already becomes small group discussion. And then you inject a game or two. However, because of all of this, you cannot just lecture anymore. Forgive me for this one hour session and the shorter the time, Webinars are really designed to be just input giving, just download heavy, but we're talking about your longer virtual classes. You have to approach it as an event. Okay? Just asking uh, though, those who were able to catch our opening, while you were waiting for our opening, what was happening? What were you listening to? Please chat with me. What did you notice was happening in the classroom when you were waiting for us to start? I'll wait for some responses in the chat room. When we were waiting to start, what was happening in the virtual classroom? Who was here before we started? Some of you got uh, into this Zoom room five minutes before not getting any responses of the moment what was happening hmm. before elaine introduced uh, ourselves what was happening video introduction there was a video presentation and together with the video was an upbeat music yes and that's what i was saying you have to approach your classes right now with an event Honestly, did you find the music upbeat? Yes? Did you find the music uh, lively? Because that needs to set the tone for your classes. So you have to find a way. Of course, you, you will need to choose the kind of music. It's a very catchy tune, P P PJ. I, 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 agree, I uh, agree with you. You also have to, depending on the courses that you run, some may not need to be as upbeat as others, but my point is you have to approach your design of classes now as a learning event. Okay? Here are four of the 50 tips that I will cover on October 26 on design. But let me share with you four tips. And then I'll talk about delivery and then we can have some time for Q&A. And these are not theor theoretical, these are all based on my experience running more than 200 of these virtual classes the past six months. Number one, you have to adapt learning rules. Okay, if you can just go back, uh, Elaine, to that one, adapting learning rules. And when you talk about learning rules or house rules, it's very easy to enforce them before because the trainer is on site. What I realized in our virtual classes is that you really have to emphasize the responsibility of the learner. Okay? And that's where, Elaine, you can go ahead and show the next slide. You'll have to make a few choices first. 
very quickly when the lockdown started, I've done all in-person training, right? I immediately had to shift to four things. Now, our offerings to our clients, when they go to us for training, when they inquire, do you want a webinar? Do you want a live virtual class? Do you want uh, blended learning? Or do you want e-learning? A webinar, usually 45 minutes to an hour, really intended to be just information download, just giving inputs, no interaction. Right? A live virtual class puts that kind of interaction because we can turn on videos, we can have activities. I can call you on the spot. I ran a virtual class earlier where I will call people on the spot. I have a list of participants and they share their insights and thoughts. They respond to questions. If you want blended learning, as the name implies, some of you are familiar with blended learning. Some of you have actually implemented this. But if you're not familiar, blended learning is where you blend different methodologies. You have self-paced activities and you have a virtual class as well. And our blended learning is powered by our ljmd.online platform. Immediately in May, we're able to put this up. So clients who ask us for blended learning, they enroll here. This is not open to the public. This is for in-house. And it's very similar to LinkedIn Learning or to other e-learning platforms that you have. You even watch videos of Louis Banta across different topics. However, since it's blended, we still have to meet in class so that we can process your lessons. We can answer your questions that you may have as you watch the videos and went through some exercises. But the good thing with blended is that since all the videos already deliver the lectures, when I meet people in my virtual class, if it's blended, it's just all interaction and Q&A and activities. Guess the word is one of the so many things that we do. But you can imagine virtual role plays. Yes, virtual role plays, virtual simulations, breakout rooms and group sharing happening in breakouts can all be integrated. So that's the first decision point. Okay? And Elaine, if you can just show the next one, what do we have there? E-learning is something that we are building. If you notice, we are really into a lot of recording there, even with that green background to provide that uh, possibility of doing CGI. So that's upcoming and please watch out for more of that. Okay? I'm also trying to show this to show that you can, given the size of your organization and depending on the resources that you have, Look at our video recorder there. It's just an iPhone. You can also do the same thing. If, and if everybody understands Tagalog here, just wanted to emphasize this, pwede kang mag-create ng e-learning mo. Pwede kang mag-create ng blended learning mo. If, if you have a phone, yes, you can definitely do this. Let's go to the next slide, Elaine, and I think we will go back to adapting learning rules. The house rules will really have to place greater responsibility on the learner. So in our set of house rules, in the next set of house rules that you will do, make sure that you mention that they have to get the best learning seat in their location so that their internet connection is not interrupted. You will have to emphasize in your learning rules, just like how we showed it earlier. Part of that, I read it earlier, avoid multitasking. We don't need to say that before, pre-COVID, yes? Because you can immediately call the attention of the person who will open his or her laptop if they, have, they bring one in class. But now, you really have to start with learning rules. And there are also... If my virtual class is heavy in activities, I will encourage them from leaving because at any point there's an activity or the breakout rooms no? and they will get lost when they go back. So simple rules such as asking permission from trainers, chatting with the trainer, I need to leave. Or when people 
ask permission to leave and then when they go back to their seat just giving us an indication of BRB especially for some activities that depend on headcount there are activities that depend on headcount that's my simple tip for you I'll go to tip number two for design and this is simply to check the constraints of your tech platform okay? somebody knows webinar jam earlier let me ask you if you are to choose which would you use zoom ms teams google meet webex skype what will you use let's type in the chat room if you can choose what will you use i'm seeing zoom I saw WebEx. I also saw Google Meet. What I like in Google Meet, as I wait for the other responses, what I like in Google Meet is it's so easy to use. Yes? Just click the link, and in a few seconds, you're there. You can actually start the meeting. What I like in Zoom is that there are icons or emojis that represent the reactions. Yes, the thumbs up. You can also build in poll questions in Zoom as well which you cannot easily do in MS Teams or in uh, WebEx. But I understand that if you work in a company, you have your preference, you have your constraints because of IT security, and that's the only thing that you can use. Just be aware that if you are constrained to use a platform, you know what you are missing. If you ask me what I recommend, from webinar jam that I use in April, we no longer use that. It's less interactive. Obviously, we're using Zoom now. Zoom is by bet. If my clients do not have uh, a preference, I would recommend Zoom. We can do a lot of things in Zoom. I've also used that whiteboard in Zoom for us to shift to a different visual. Okay. Yes, there is a whiteboard facility or feature in Zoom where the trainer, if you have good handwriting, if you're very good in drawing as well, if you're very good in creating graphical frameworks, you can use that. For technical training, for process training, you can also use the whiteboard. Checking with the group, are you still with me? Am I still making sense? Are we still making sense? Yes, please type in sense. If I'm still making sense, Please type in sense. Okay. And you know that this is my style. You can use the Louis Banta style. And the Louis Banta style is simply asking questions with structured responses. Okay. And I will depend on different answers, yes, yes, agree, or sense, because I don't know if it's a chat bot, which is already typing the answers there. We have to make sure that we are connected. Okay. What I like in Zoom are also the emojis for reactions. And as I mentioned, all questions. Let's go to number three. Tweak and create new activities. I believe I'll eat up the, uh, the time for my lectures with my tips. No? Tweak and create new activities. This was one of the pain points that I experienced during the early part of this uh, lockdown. Because we're so heavily dependent on a lot of SLEs or games. In any LJMB training, we use a lot of games. And over time, we had to either tweak mechanics, instructions, and materials for certain activities, and even invent new activities. And that no less than Coach Chot Reyes of uh, Gilas, Pilipinas, you know Chot Reyes, yes? Because he conducts a lot of these motivational talks, and now he ran out of uh, ideas for virtual activities. He reached out to us and even found our set of activities really appropriate for a virtual setup. I believe we have an example for them, Elaine. We can present this activity. This is a video of an actual exercise that we did for a multicultural management audience. Yes? And uh, you, know, you know how it goes. It's easy to Google and get inspiration, but I tell you, the devil is in the mechanics. The devil is in the instructions. The devil is in the execution. And when I say devil, it's, the concept is easy to comprehend. But you really have to plan everything. Manpower, who will man each of the breakout teams. 
what will be the specific instructions, considering that you want everything self-service in a virtual class. And I'll talk more about self-service in a while. Okay? When I said the devil is in the execution, the next slide, okay, that's an actual video that we got. Okay? I demonstrated, guess the word earlier, right? Did you like that exercise, by the way? Simple and straightforward. And can you imagine we are dividing people in teams and we add points so you can actually stimulate team competition? Okay? A lot of guesses. I know that you know doing bring me games, what else? Charades games no? and Pictionary games. But the devil, I would use the word devil to pertain to the success is really in the execution. So I bring with me a team of marshals or co-facilitators. On the next slide, you can show their photos. Here are some of our LJMB co-facilitators. And you also have to plan out roles and responsibilities of each one. And if you take a look at the upper right-hand portion, there are specific tasks that really need to be assigned to people. And while you see me here as the sole face and voice in this virtual class, there are three more people on standby, ready to do something if something goes haywire, haywire in our class today. And you can see our behind the scenes interaction and coordination there. Okay? And yes, while the session is ongoing, that team of support co-facilitators are constantly communicating with each other because we're also adapting to the class. If you prefer, to integrate a lot of activities, team activities, team competition, and team subgroup, breakout groups, you will need a support team with specific roles and responsibilities. Okay. Let me now move on to number four. This is the last of my tips for design. Use self-service instructions. My experience is that people depend on the trainer a lot. That has happened pre-COVID. They depend a lot more on us, especially during virtual classes. They, we would need to repeat instructions. And if you have activities that are really, really have complicated instructions, it's really best to place them there on the slide. So for example, what I have here, I have six steps there. And I had the breakout team assignments on that other uh, uh, quadrant. Okay. And then you have uh, what guide questions do they need to answer as well as operating the tech platform. For example, how to join a breakout room and how to leave a breakout room as well. Okay. And when I use, say self-service instructions, we want to put less stress on you as the trainer so you can focus more on facilitation. But this really requires a lot of planning. Less planning, less preparation, the more work, the more stress the virtual trainer has to do talking about these instructions in a Zoom meeting. Lots more that I'd like to share on design. There's also storyboarding. I will talk more about that on October 26. So if you manage to join us on October 26, I will go through storyboards that I've created for blended learning, as well as sample role plays, case studies, and simulations, and how we can tweak that in a virtual class. For now, four tips on design, and I'll now move forward to our tips on delivery. By the way, let's stay here, Elaine, and let's engage our class of trainers. One, two, three, four. Which one is your like most? One, two, three, four. Simple, no-brainer stuff, but I'm warning you, I've been there. These are really important considerations. Okay, using self-service instructions. Self-service, I don't want to use the word idiot-proof. Okay? But it also helps to uh, use that term because you really don't want people asking and clarifying again. And it also minimizes the confusion. For those who are saying number three, 
I ended up, my team ended up creating more activities because a lot of what we used to do before require, uh, tweaking will not be enough. You would really need to recreate some activities. I'll now move on to tips for delivery. Okay? Design is one thing, delivery is another. But if your design is good, delivery is easier. So let's talk about how do you engage a class without your in-person presence. It's still face-to-face, -face, guys. So the wrong term is face-to-face. -face. This is still face-to-face. -face. If I ask all of, you, all of you to turn on your cameras, we're still meeting each other face-to-face. -face. High impact statements. You know, ABCD is all about the personality of the trainer. You do process training, you do product training, you do language training, you do, you do culture training, you do soft skills training, sales training, customer service, whatever training you do, you would really need to level up your passion and your, uh, your delivery skills, your floor skills here. The only difference is that you might be seated. Some trainers prefer to stand so that they can really you know, use their uh, gestures. Although they can't see you, whole body, the four important body language items in virtual classes is your eye contact, your facial expression, your posture, and your hand gestures. You have those four, you're good. Eye contact, practice looking more at the camera than on anything else. You can glance at your material, but go back to the camera. That provides participants that semblance of connection. Okay? When I say high impact statements, you would need to deliver more concise statements, shorter instructions, shorter messages. Why? There's latency and there's lag. If you deliver long sentences and there's a lag, miscommunication, misunderstanding, misinterpretation especially if you're delivering training and participants will have to go through an exam. And their scores can mean job security or passing certain hurdles. What is CFU, CFA, and CFC? Check for understanding. CFA, check for agreement. CFC, check for connection. Your checks for understanding is could be as simple as Understood, clear. Of course, in face-to-face, in-person trainings, you can ask questions, you can quiz participants, you can still do that. My check for understanding or agreement is simply agree or disagree. I love asking structured questions in this virtual format, especially our training time is reduced, yes? And we don't want people verbose and eating up a lot of air time. In CFC, I've done a lot of that. I will ask you to type in sense. I'll, type, I'll, I'll ask you to type in uh, um, agree. Yes. As long as you're chatting with me, I know you feel we are connected. Is that a safe assumption? That we feel we're connected? Do you feel connected with me? Even if you, even if, or it's not in person? Please type in yes if you feel connected with me. Type in yes if you feel connected with me. Okay. So I'll move on to number two. And this is a reinforcement of what I just said earlier, connecting with learners. Okay. Maximize the tech features available. Okay. Earlier in my two to four class, somebody had uh, was is not able to chat, broken chat feature. That's why he always has to unmute. That's good because we can hear voices of people. And as a house rule, as a learning rule, whoever speaks will also have to turn on his or her video. Again, providing that moment of in-person connection. Okay. The chat room, as you all know, has been bustling with activity. Wow, maybe 300 messages coming from different people in the past hour. Okay. And some samples of screenshots that we've taken in our previous sessions will really show that we've utilized the chat feature so much. 
Elaine, can we show samples of our screenshots in uh, previous sessions? I've done a lot of multicultural workshops as in 10 nationalities in one session, and they appreciate this level of interaction that we have in our workshops. Look at that. I will check in if my, my broadcast is loud and clear. And it practically encourages people to also interact and react to each other. What I'll do next is to show you my usual setup. Let's show my usual setup, Elaine. This is my setup. This is my preferred setup. Of course, I need to have lights, especially at this time of day. You notice that I'm using two screens. I use my iPad Pro to broadcast through Zoom. And of course, I'm seeing you all here in my iPad. But my iMac, my desktop, also features my talking points. And I don't need to read them. Just in case I forget where am I, I get diverted, or I forget key points, key lines, I go back to my talking points. And this is what I like about this virtual setup. Yes, you can't do this in in-person training, reading your notes. Here, it could be here as your security blanket. I also have the session slides here with me. So I also know what's uh, coming up next. Some sort of a presenter's view in PowerPoint. And I also have my participants profile open. If this is a longer class and I'll be putting some of you on the spot asking you questions, I'll just refer to my favorite number, number 12, and call that person and then call others to participate. This is one of the reasons why I like delivering in this virtual setup. I have references that I need, yes, but you also have to work double time on leveraging and maximizing on your presentation power. Eye contact, facial expressions, posture gestures, and your vocal variety. Okay. We'll put everything that I covered in the past hour and if some of you can stay, if some of you want to stay, so you can ask questions through chat or you can speak, you want to speak, I'll be more than glad to stay to entertain your questions. Look at one hour, just passed by so well fast. We have these four chunks and I'd like, I'd like you to chat with me what has been your major takeaway in this short session. I know it's short. If there's one key takeaway that you have, what would that be? Please chat with me. Waiting for answers in the chat room. If there's one thing that you will bring with you in your training practice right after this short teaser, what would that be? Waiting for answers in the chat room. And as we wait for answers, you can pick from any of these, or maybe it's something that I did. Maybe it's something that I demonstrated. It's not something that I lectured. Abigail is saying the self-service buttons, the design, the technique of connecting with learners. What about the others? And while, as we wait for more responses, once again, this one hour is supposed to be a teaser. Yes, a teaser that on October 26 and 27, we'll be offering a masterclass, three hours for design and three hours for delivery. Let me repeat that. Three hours on design, I'll show you storyboarding, I'll give you tips on choosing the right method, also showcase a lot of things that we do, and also show you a lot more techniques on engaging delivery over virtual. Design tweak and constantly connecting with the audience. Okay. Hi, this is Louis Banta, CEO and Chief Consultant of LJMB or Learning Just Made Better. Thanks for watching my video. To get more videos like this, click subscribe and hit the bell icon below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and share this to others.